Hello and welcome to this year's version of the live demos. We have three speakers and we will start with the marvelous David Bremner doing something. Wow, such enthusiasm from the back. Um, so every year I say, oh, I don't want to be that guy who gives the same talk every year at DevCon. So, and then they drag me back. So here I am talking about not much again. I want to focus uh, on what's new, uh, hence the title. Also, if you know not much, it's a small joke. Um, so for those of you who don't know anything about not much, it's a mail user agent or search library or indexing tool or something along those lines. There's a website. You can install it on Debian. Uh, Debian is unsurprisingly the most supported distro, uh, somewhat to the irritation of non-Debian people. Um, so OK, so what's new? Uh, since last DebConf, we had three feature releases, 11 bug fix releases, which sounds impressive, but they were basically each uh, Debian upload. So we do a kind of merged upstream Debian uh, development process. Um, we had nine release candidates, which is just uploads to experimental. OK, so what did that mean in terms that we can all understand? Uh, well, you know, there were some commits, and the good news is that there was more than one person doing those commits. So uh, you can see about five little committers, maybe six or seven. So that's good, right? Um, the project's not dead yet. It wants to go for a walk. It's feeling happy. Um, yeah, OK, so, so this is going to stop soon, I hope. I mean, not the project, but the movie. <laughs> All right. So you can. So, so as a comment, um, this tool is kind of silly. Um, I mean, it's cool in some ways, but it looks like we did all this massive development over here. That was like 10 minutes work, right? Copying in some files from the Linux kernel, kernel mailing list. OK, never mind. So. Um, what do we do? So the most important feature probably is we support blocking opens, which means those of you who insist on running things in cron won't blow up your foreground things uh, as much anymore. So, so that, I think, is, much, is a big improvement. Um, we support uh, some regex searching. Uh, it's a bit slower. Um, because the underlying database is not really about regexes. Um, and also, I should point out that just because I'm writing little list programs to use the, the, to demo things doesn't mean you have to. You can do all this pretty much the same thing in the shell, or in a lot, or in uh, NeoMutt, which is currently masquerading as MUT in Debian. Um, so let me see. This is, I want to find all the mail from people B dot star at Debian, because clearly those are the important people. Um, it's still pretty fast. So, so there's a certain amount of brute forcery going on there. Um, but it's uh, quite acceptably fast. I have about half a million messages in my database. So uh, to give you some idea of, of how things scale or don't scale. Um, OK, so, so um, you can have uh, regexes for tags which opens up a few interesting possibilities uh, as far as, for example, I'm using uh, prefixes on tags to, to organize things. So it gives you a kind of hierarchical thing. Um, okay, there's a very minor thing to anybody who's not familiar with the project. Um, there's the Zapian uh, query parser was only able to parse ranges for dates, and so it was super annoying. You had to say today, dot, dot, today. To, to find the mail for things. OK, yeah, it's, it's, that's almost an embarrassing to call that a feature. Um, what's interesting, and I think is pretty underutilized now, is you can um, make aliases for queries, and, you know, whatever you want. Here, 
I'm looking for the messages to Debian policy uh, today. Uh, and, oops, what happened? There are no messages today. That was totally successful. Um, let's try yesterday, just because, you know, I'm a little nervous. And that is today, you're absolutely correct. Thank you. Oh, you guys are, I guess you could call that helpful. <laughs> Where's the quote missing? Oh, goodness. And then somehow in my fugue, I <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So uh, yesterday, right? Okay. So um, so that's a, a feature that I think not as many people know about uh, as as could find it useful. Um, all right. So all that stuff is available everywhere. <laughs> the everywhere that uses not much. This is a surprising number of places. Um, another huge feature, which, you know, is embarrassing that we didn't have it before, is uh, draft, save, and resume. So here's a mail message that I am sending. I am inexplicably nervous. Um, all right, so I, I need to think about that, right? Do I really want to send that mail? And uh, so uh, let me look for that draft. Well, they're just, uh, of course, Bill is sending messages in the future. Um, so here's, uh, here's uh, this message, and I can, you know, just like a real mail user agent, right? Okay. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, this is not as new. Um, so we have a kind of uh, menu for selecting, uh, if you like, virtual folders. Uh, so to quickly uh, navigate your set of not much searches. Um, and that's accessible via J, so I can say J. Uh, and N to get to my not much, well, one of my not much searches, if you like virtual folders. Okay, this is supposed to be kind of fast and inexplicable, right? So you're getting hints of what you could, what you might be missing. Um, so here uh, is another UI feature, which is a customizable way to set up tagging workflows. And so what I've got set up is uh, a bunch of uh, key sequences that tag things in specific ways to help me manage uh, not much uh, patches and so on. So uh, I can say uh, N W, and then it's uh, if we look, it's tagged, work in progress, and um, so it's a kind of auto completion feature, and. Um, Obviously, not everybody cares as much about not much as I do, so that's my my configuration that's driving that kind of menu structure. So, all right. So you may find that useful for your own thing. Um, here's another new feature which at first I was skeptical about, but it actually seems pretty cool. Um, so, uh, navigating in long threads, right? So, one minute. Right. Okay. So good. I have one minute to find the message I'm looking for. And so there's a sort of expanded view of the whole thread, but I also get a pop-up menu. And clearly, I want to hear what Phil said. And what did Phil say? OK. So uh, he said it's fine with him. So he's an agreeable guy. <laughs> OK. Um, and that's pretty much it. Let me just uh, finish off with some bug fixes. We managed to not index giant HTML images, which is a huge thing. Or it's a small thing. It's smaller than before or something. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Next up is Guido. If we, if we have time, yeah. yes. Hello everyone, I will show some new and maybe not so new things in Git build package which happened during the last year. Um, some of the th things that are in there are not actually very new but not very well known because people ask if is this possible or not and so I just added them here as well. For the first time I'm using org mode to demo these things and I hope that it works well. So the basic idea is that I run things here and then the output of these commands just pops up below the rest of it. Um, so in this case, I basically like clone from a re remote repository. So that's, that's a, a, um, actually with the first new feature. So we now can like just say VCS git and then it will just look at the packages VCS git URL and then clone from there. It's basically what depth checkout does, but it also sets up the branches for upstream and for the pristine tar things. So the, you're good to go. Um, and also for every project nowadays, you also have to support a GitHub pseudo URL. Um, uh, actually, a new command is gbp push. So when you like have uploaded your package and you want to push all the changes, it's like um, pretty easy to forget um, to push all the tags and to push all the branches and do the right thing. So um, we added the gbp push command and um, that basically, let's create a re remote repository first that we did that at the I created a remote repository on the local laptop so I don't have to push out on the internet, but the, the, this one is called foo. And then I can just invoke gbp push with the just created repository and um, it will push there the Debian tag, the upstream tag, the pristine tar branch, because in this case I'm using pristine tar, I, um, the upstream branch and the Debian branch. So no longer forgetting any stuff. So you can like j just give the remote on the command line or it will just pick the right remote where you cloned from, um, from your configuration. So that should make things ho hopefully a little bit simpler. Another new command is um, gbp export oric. So um, for now, if you want to recreate a tarball, you basically invoke gbp build package with lots of command line parameters to, te to tell it to not perform a build because you just wanted the tarball for something else. Um, there's now an extra command for that. And um, we can do that here again export the tarball from the thing we imported before and then we see here that it just created the tarball again it will now verify the tarball because pristine tar got verification support so if there is a tarball already it basically checks the checksum is correct with um, what's stored in git and if it isn't it just gets recreated so that should make things a bit simpler hopefully too another thing um, which was fixed actually that is a bug fix is we now when we don't use pristine tar and we export a tarball from, from Git, we have stable sh um, checksums now as well. So it's reproducible. Um, that didn't used to be the case, but Anak had fi fixed it at some point, and so we can basically um, export the tarball. <laughs> at some point, we get the same checksums, as long as Git archive doesn't change in a way that breaks this, obviously. So we're basically relying on Git archive doing the right thing for the future. Um, there's another new thing, which is kind of like corner case, but sometimes you just like have imported all the things and you want to add the pristine tar commits at a later point and um, don't worry about to make pristine tar put the right commitish um, in the Git repository. So there's um, gbp pristine tar commit now as well. Um, let's create a new repository first. This repository is um, slightly different. You see this down here because it has an additional tarball pulled in there. And um, then we can like basically add the oops pristine 
tar commits as well. And then we see, like, basically right down here, it added the pristine tar commit for the original tarball, for the original tarball, and for the one additional tarball, we have an additional branch here which carries the pristine tar data. Um, the other new thing is um, GBP import auric, like the tool for importing the tarballs, kind of um, changed its behavior. So, so far, if you imported the upstream tarball, it would just go ahead and merge it into your Debian branch, which is kind of pointless if you're using like um, patches unapplied mode, because then what you want is like take the upstream tree as it is, put it on the Debian branch, and just leave the Debian directory as it is on that thing. I'm not going to demo that here because it's like you don't see very much in the demo. I can just show the Git trees if you want to. And the other new thing is um, we kind of roll back on error. So if you like import a big tarball and you run out of disk space, then you have done half of the thing. So do you maybe maybe already have imported the tarball. You might have already parts of the pristine have the pristine tar commit. And once you wanted to move on the Debian branch, it will fail in some way. Five and um, sorry, I'm trying to. Demo this as well. This part just creates a new Git repository, so I can, can show that. Um, let's run that one. And so it imports the tarball. Now I should sign the tag. I abort that because I don't want to enter my passphrase. And then you just see down here that it rolled back the changes um, from, from the import. So there's nothing left that, um, that annoys you. And then you can just like free disk space or whatever is needed to. Um, to, to import the thing. Um, the other thing is just that's just the bug fix as well. So so far, if you had a local thing you wanted to import with the GBP import DSC, you basically just gave the DSC file. And if it was a remote file, you basically had, had to pass minus minus download. Now it's just smart enough to if there's a URL on the command line, it just assumes that um, that it should be a download. And the same thing is true for the apt pseudo URL. So you can just tell it apt colon and then whatever you want and which distribution it should pull from. And then it will just pull that in. You can do that as well. And um, hopefully it won't take that long. So now, now it just fetches it from the remote and creates a Git repository with, with all the data in it. Um, one thing we added for. Um, Git build package is like, I'm just creating a new repository here. And down here, um, that's the new thing. So there's a, a sloppy mode. So basically, if you just like, sometimes you just want to do something like a native build. So you would just want to build what's on your Debian branch. And you don't want to care about Debian patches and all these kind of things. So um, if you pass git upstream tree sloppy, it will not use any upstream branches. It will just use the branch you're on and we'll just drop the Debian directory from it and create that as an upstream tarball. The other op options down here are just because I don't want to perform an actual build, so I disable all hooks I have there and, and disable the builder. And we can just run that again. And um, then we see that um, we created um, the tarball from another commit. And the grep here shows that the file we removed up here. So we, when I imported the whole thing, I removed one file from, from the current directory. And it's not ending up in the table as expected. Um, so what else is there? There's a command for querying configuration options that's been there since quite some time. But I'm not sure if many people are using it. So you just like git like, you just say gpp config, and then the command, and then which option you want to have. And then it puts out the option name. And that's basically all I wanted to show. So there's some documentation out there. Um, which got a rework during the last year as well. And um, GBP is also on PyPy. And the Python 3 version is in experimental so that we can get rid of Python 2 support at some time. That's basically all I wanted to show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up is Cyphermox Mathieu. Just a moment while he plugs his laptop in. I should be singing or something, but <laughs> well, I think I think we're nearly there, Tony. So you know, no need for me to start. No need for me to start singing yet. I don't see it. Okay, well. You ready? No, I can't. 
Oh dear. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, but mini display port. Too. Mini display port. Okay. This one? Good. Yeah. Good. That works. Ooh. Yes? Yep. Yes. <coughs> Anybody know any other good songs? <laughs> Dance routines? Right to you. Thank you. Okay. You're on. Good. Uh, so good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Matthew. Uh, I'm. What I want to show you today is something that I've been working on for the past two weeks. Uh, so one of the things that is often forgotten, um, let me just clone the screens. So one of the things that is often forgotten in the context of Secure Boot is that you need, um, what you usually want in Secure Boot is to have your, um, your bootloader um, signed, but you also want your kernel signed. And what that implies is having your modules signed as well. So uh, let's see. So you'll excuse that I use Ubuntu to demonstrate this because some other pieces are missing. But basically, um, what happens if you need some special hardware? Your modules aren't signed if they're not coming from the archive. Um, and that means that you need to somehow sign these modules. But let's be honest, signing modules is not something that is terribly easy to do for just anyone. You need to create a certificate. You need to um, prepare all kinds of other things. <clears throat> and even signing itself is a kind of weird command that you need to use and know about. So what about DKMS? What about uh, Auntie May who wants to use our brand new widget that does, um, I don't know, whatever. And that's not even the wrong, the right user. So, so as you can see from the zero one at the end here, Secure Boot is enabled. And if we look to see that, um, there is no other variable in firmware than mock list RT, which is just a list of enrolled certificates. Uh, if validation and shim was disabled, then you'd see another variable that, that specifies this. So let's see if I try to mod probe uh, BB switch, which is a module that is commonly done um, as a DKMS package. Uh, it looks like I don't have it. So let's install that. So what I did was basically a DKMS, sm some small changes to the DKMS postance to run things that would be shipped in a shim sign package to give the user a, some kind of wizard so that they can do signing uh, easily. So all you really need to type in is a password um, that will be asked again on reboot to make sure that the user is, is actually authorized to do that, the change. and um, integrate a new key. And if I reboot that system, I 
I can see the key that I've just been that has just been created. Let's enroll it. And now reboot. So basically, the pieces missing right now in Debian are, uh, as far as I could tell, because I tried this in a, in a pure Debian VM that I just cleanly installed, uh, the kernel doesn't seem to be enforcing that modules are signed. And the, not everything is in place yet to fully integrate booting from shim to grub to a signed kernel. So now if I try to mod probe BB switch again, it will actually load and say just that device doesn't exist on that VM. Uh, what you would see if I tried to mod probe something else, uh, let's see. Actually, I don't have anything else to mod probe with. So let's remove that key. So this is basically the same process that the wizard is running behind the scenes, just mock util delete or mock util import. And now I can go back, reboot to get into the shim mock manager that allows me to change the states in shim. So the great thing with all of this is that you don't need to remember a long OpenSSL command. You don't need to remember mockutil. You don't need to really care about the commands that come with uh, shim, mockutil, fe boot manager, all these things that control the firmware. And basically everything is done. It, you're basically handled through the whole process. So as you can see, now that I've removed the key, it simply, the kernel simply notices that the key is not available and refused to load the module. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up is Denver Gingrich. And I guess I'll just keep talking until we're all set up. Um, Surprisingly, I have nothing to say this morning. Well, you see, normally I just you know rabbit on about whatever it, whatever it comes to mind, but somehow I just can't quite seem to fill the space between the uh, between the acts today. So, um, <laughs> shh, don't blow my cover. Um, yep. So we could, for example, observe as you know, laptop gets set up. Sound gets set up. Oh no, he's ready. Right. Okay, let's go. Ready? Almost. Well, nearly ready. All right, so my name is Denver, also known as OSS Guy. Uh, I will be talking to you a little bit about Sopranica here. So it's a collection of projects, as you can see, and it helps you generalize 
phone numbers. So you don't have to use your phone if you don't want to. Uh, so as you can see, the primary production uh, deployment right now is this JMP here. So we will go to this website, which if the Wi-Fi is still working great, should come up quickly. Great. Uh, so this is JMP. So you can see here a little bit about it. If you have a Jabber account already, you don't really need to do all of this stuff. So you have a Jabber ID. Um, all Debian developers have one. It's your username at debian.org. Um, and then you can use a Jabber client. So we recommend uh, conversations for uh, these two. And then uh, there's also one for iOS if you have to. Um, and then, so that now that you have these two, you can just get a phone number. Great. So uh, I have this phone number. So I first need to enter my Jabber ID. Uh, but just to kind of show you how that is generally set up. So we have something like Gadgem here. So we will edit our accounts and we'll add a new account. Um, so I have an account that I want to use. Um, it's a very uh, unique account, very nice. Um, so we'll do this. Uh, great. And we will just uh, rename this one so it's a little nicer. Okay, great. So now we have this account. Oh, where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, is this not active? Active. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, it it is. Yeah, maybe it's at the bottom already. Anyway, um, so we are connected to this one. So we will enter our driver ID, which, as you saw, was uh, JMP Live at. Uh, yeah. That's it. We we'll connect again. Great. Okay. So we've got this. You didn't see it on my screen, but I did receive a notification about this. Um, so I'll show you this here. Great, so we got this JMP verification code, very nice. Um, so we'll put this code in here and hit submit. And boom, so that is now my JMP number. Um, so now we can do interesting things with this. Um, so if uh, any of you wanted to, you could um, text that phone number and um, uh, things would show up here. I'm going to do that myself unless someone else beats me to it. Okay. Okay, so I am sending myself the message. Oh, look, we have someone who has already. Oh, there's a few people who are talking to me already. <laughs> Great. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so what do we what do we have here? Uh, okay. Oh, there we are. Okay. Yes, lots of people. Okay, so we have all these people. Yes, good, excellent, and and uh, <laughs> and this is me. So yeah, wonderful. Uh, so now I can reply to one of these. I'll actually reply to um, uh, uh, to this person um, because I don't actually know who they are, but um, it looks like they might be from uh, the Montreal area. So. Um, so right, great. And then, um, oh, right, this person is not in my contact list, so I'll just add them to my roster here a second. Um, yeah, good, it's fine. Um, uh, oh, apologies, there's a minor little. Uh, yeah, the plus is fine, the plus is fine. Um, so, great. And then uh, I will uh, Five minutes. say this again. Okay. And then you can see once they're in your roster, um, you'll get this little green check mark. And that's actually a message coming back from my carrier 
saying um, we have uh, delivered this message um, to you know the carrier on the other end. So uh, this is all native through XMPP, which has delivery receipts. So we just uh, pass this through here. So this is great. Um, and you can do all of this uh, just like that. Um, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> What's that? Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. There you go. That's the that's the number there. Um, and just to kind of um, uh, yeah, what, how can I keep that number on the screen there? I'm not sure. Anyway, so just remember that number there um, as I look at other stuff on this page. So scrolling down here, you can see making and receiving phone calls. So it's not just about text messaging, although that's maybe the the easiest thing to use it for. Um, you can also uh, you can also receive and make phone calls. Um, so by default, when um, you are uh, when you receive a phone call, it will go to voicemail directly. If you're not logged into your SIP client, um, here's my SIP account down here. If you're quick, you can grab that password and then start making phone calls as me. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, that's generally how how you would do it. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to do that right now. Um, hopefully, I'm I'm quick enough to do this. Okay, so I'm calling my phone number. This JMP number here. Okay, it's ringing. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is a test message. <laughs> Great, okay, so we sent this text message. Now let's see what happens. Oh, my messages are flashing. Okay, what do we have? Oh, okay. So we have subject vo voicemail, and we have this voicemail thing. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, I transcribed pretty well. So yeah. Anyway. <laughs> oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, great. So we have this, um, and you can see it also supports. Uh, uh, Non-North American phone numbers here as well, um, and uh, yeah, that that is to say, we we can receive from these. Um, we cannot yet send text messages back to these, uh, but you de can definitely receive calls and and that sort of thing. Sorry, two minutes. Okay, um, great. So yeah, you can see how it transcribes the call, and then you can click this um, if you're using. Um, um, if you're using uh, Conversations, which is the recommended Android uh, XMPP client, um, this will actually show up as a little like play button, and then you can just hit play if you want to listen to it. Um, and um, yes, more things. Um, so uh, I, we do support emoji, of course. Um, it's just that uh, my machine does not. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, th uh, this would look very nice in Conversations. I'm sure you'd see like a a very nice um, uh, happy face or something like that. I, I'm not good at interpreting that one right there. Um, so, a taco. <laughs> a, a taco. Okay, excellent. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so this is uh, this is JMP. Um, we are the kind of the next countries we're interested in going for are um, uh, the UK and Germany. That seems to be where most people who are interested in this sort of thing reside, who are not in um, Canada or the US. Um, and then I'll just show you here um, where you might want to go. Oh, there's even more messages. So many good things. Um, so go to support here. And this, if you want to um, chat with us more about this, you can join our, um, our chat room here. Oh, come on, you buggy browser. Um, so yeah, you can join the chat room, and now I'm uh, in the chat room as, oh, someone has found us already. Okay, <laughs> great. Well, this is good. So I, I'm guest two, guest two, great. Okay, and yeah, so we, we chat about lots of things in here. Um, and of course, you can, um, you can join this chat room from, uh, from your XMPP client directly, if you like. So yeah, people are typing stuff in here, saying hi, maybe. Yes, great. Time's up. Okay, thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you very much.
probably not. We might be able to fit it in, but probably not. Sorry. Sorry. We almost had a bonus demo, but everybody kind of went to the right time. So, um, you've been a lovely audience, and the next round of live demos will be next year in Taiwan. See you there. <laughs>